Hey guys, my name's Josh. Welcome to Learn Rosin Now. And today we're going to take a look at building our very first analyzer. So we'll go through sort of the file new project experience, um, what it looks like in Visual Studio, and maybe we'll play around with the code a little bit, but not too much. This is going to be a really basic sort of intro video for analyzers. So in order to get those up and running, we'll just do file new project. Um, you have to have the uh, .NET compiler platform SDK installed, so if you don't, you won't have these other options. But once you do, we can just select this analyzer with a code fix project. And we'll go ahead and create a brand new project here. Um, and we'll see once it loads that there's essentially three C-sharp projects that make up an analyzer. And we'll sort of talk about what each one does and, and why it's not, it might seem overwhelming at first because there's so much code and so much boilerplate thrown at you, but um, why you really shouldn't be too afraid of them. So we've got our, our little readme here, and the first thing that you'll notice is that we have this little, uh, this readme, and it explains that analyzers can be deployed in two ways. You can deploy them either as a NuGet package that gets shipped with um, another dependency that you've put up on NuGet, and every time someone pulls down that library, you ship an analyzer with it, or you can deploy it as a VSIX extension. So if you saw the, the video on Visual Studio Workspace, that's another sort of similar option uh, that we have here. So we'll take a look, um, we'll just close this and we'll take a look at the three projects that I talked about just in the side here. First of all, we've got this analyzer 5vsix um, All it has in it is a VSIX manifest that tells Visual Studio to load our analyzer up to run it, um, what sort of things we're going to be provided, that sort of basic Visual Studio extension stuff. Nothing here that you should really have to uh, edit. But this is sort of the, the starting project, and you'll notice it's, it's set as our startup project because this is what's going to run when we click F5. It'll boot up a whole new Visual Studio, put our analyzer in it, and we'll be able to play around with it. Um, next, we've got this test project, and it's got some useful unit tests in it. We'll take a look at those really quickly. Uh, you'll see that like they ship sample C-sharp code. Um, it checks whether or not like expected diagnostics are, are you know, raised based on problematic code. And then um, I think they even do fixes. So they, they do some stuff to prove that their fixes are working. And if you're building analyzers, you'll probably want your tests because you'll find that um, writing these things can be sort of brittle sometimes. Like you won't see when you change the logic of your analyzer how it's going to impact all these other corner cases in the language. So once you build up a good test repository, uh, it's really helpful in catch, helping you like it just automatically catch little mistakes that you make by accident. And then finally, we've got this portable project, and it's our actual analyzer. This is where like the brains of an analyzer live, and it's really comprised of two, two, uh, just two C# -sharp files. We've got this diagnostic analyzer file here, and we've got a code fix provider. So this diagnostic analyzer is where all of the analysis takes place, um, where we decide where we're going to emit messages, what they're going to look like, what they're going to say. And I think the best way to sort of explore this analyzer, the default, is just to, to fire it up and, and start it off. So we'll just build it really quickly here. So you'll notice we've launched an entire new Visual Studio. Um, it's sort of like uh, a different Visual Studio with different registry settings. Uh, you can be, you know, confident that you're not going to break this one and ruin your main Visual Studio. And I give mine a different color, so uh, it doesn't match my, my real Visual Studio, and I kind of keep track of them that way. Uh, you can go and see that our analyzer did indeed deploy here. You can also see it's called Analyzer 5. You can also see that uh, I've obviously done this a few, <laughs> few times previously because we've got some other Analyzer 4, 3, 1s in there. Um, so we'll probably get the same diagnostic uh, multiple times on pieces of uh, problematic C-sharp code. I mean, in order to test our analyzer, I'll just feed it like a console application, and it will just go ahead and emit errors where it thinks there should be errors. This particular analyzer isn't very useful. You'll see that what it's complaining about is, and it complains about it four times, is that uh, the type name program contains lowercase letters. So this analyzer isn't very useful. All it wants you to do is make every type name all capitalized, but it sort of is good for demonstrating what an analyzer can do. You can see we've got these four options here, all the same thing, but once we highlight over them, uh, a, a code fix is suggested that we can provide and you know it gives us uh, some insight into what it's going to look like after. We can 
preview our changes throughout our entire document, or we can we can just apply this you know, sort of um, throughout an entire project or solution and sort of fix all these bugs at once. I'd kind of caution against doing this. Um, you, you don't always want to trust your analyzers. So the analyzers that get written sometimes, they can be flaky in edge cases. You might find that your behavior changes if you you know apply a thousand changes to a, to a, a project. So it might be good to sort of as you go along, fix these errors that are, have been discovered. But that's analyzers. You'll notice that um, we get a little warning squiggles here. They're essentially like first class errors. So they even show up inside, or warnings, I guess in this case. Um, they show up in the, the little warning thing down here. Uh, when you click on this, it will search for um, information on this analyzer. There's not very much information on Analyzer 3 out there on the web, so I don't know how useful that's going to be, but it's there. Um, and you can, uh, another thing to note is that while these, these um, diagnostics are exposed as warnings, you can also choose to make them uh, just straight up errors and make uh, co compilation fail. So one example of that that I've heard is that someone wanted to make it such that if there was the words to do in any of their comments, then you couldn't do a release build. And any time there was to do in a, a, a comment, it would just, uh, you know, kill the build, show you errors where those were, and then you would have to go and fix those. How useful that was in practice, I don't know. Maybe people just started doing two space do, or, you know, came up with some other words. I don't know if that actually fixed programmer behavior, but hey, it was a, a valiant attempt. Um, so now let's go through sort of the diagnostic analyzer portion of this. So we'll look at what's given to us here. And there's sort of a lot of code here. It seems like a lot of code to me the first time I looked at it. We'll just kill all this stuff. But really, it's we can divide it into two pieces. There's all this supplementary information, you know, titles, messages that we're going to show the user. And then these are the two actual methods where things get done. So we'll start up here. You can see that they've got, we'll just kill these comments. Um, actually, let's start, start right at, at the very top. We've got our diagnostic analyzer. You want to expose what languages your, your analyzer is supporting. Um, Visual Basic or C Sharp, those are the two options right now. And there's actually work on sort of advanced analyzers that might be able to handle both languages at once. Um, those won't be coming until the next uh, the next version of Visual Studio or the next update to Visual Studio. Sorry. Um, so going down the list here, we've got uh, just a very simple ID for it. It just defaulted to whatever the name of the project was. Then we've got these localizable strings. And if you've never worked with localizable strings before, you can um, you can just, you know, they're basically normal strings. Uh, so we can just like do something like this, title, and everything still compiles. It's no different. Um, the, di the difference is that they're trying to guide people towards using resources so you can support different languages in your analyzers. Um, that's, that's good. I, I haven't seen too many multi-language analyzers out there, but I imagine like this is a good way to guide people to having more accessible analyzers. Um, so we've got a title for our, our analyzer. We've got a message format, so that's the long message. And then we've got like a description. I think that's what shows up in the in the little um, bottom message, uh, bottom bar, the, the warnings bar. But I'm not 100% sure where each one of these shows up. And then we've got sort of this, uh, this category. The category thing has been sort of, um, everyone just puts their thing in whatever category they feel like it fits best. This one deals with names, so they put it in a naming category. I, I don't know if there's much useful recommendations I can give you there. Everyone's doing, you know, different analyzer projects are doing different categories. They're just strings. Um, I honestly, if I'm contributing to a project, I just look at whatever categories they've already put and I just choose the same ones. Um, and then finally, what, the, what happens is after we declare all this sort of supplementary information, it all gets packaged up into a diagnostic descriptor. So you can see the ID, the title, the message, uh, the category, and the description. Oops. Yeah, they're, they're all packaged up in this diagnostic descriptor. And then we expose this publicly. So this is the first sort of publicly overridden. This is what we're giving to Visual Studio. Um, we expose this via sort of a list, or in this case, an immutable array of supported diagnostics. And we, in this case, they're just supporting one particular rule. But your analyzers could, in theory, support more than one rule at a time. So that's all the work that you need to do to tell Visual Studio or, I guess, the C-sharp compiler um, 
that I have an analyzer and this is what it's going to say when it runs. So after that, we override this initialize method and we sort of at this point start to declare what kinds of things are we interested in analyzing. And in this case, we're interested in analyzing all of the uh, types within a, a given C Sharp project. So like the program type class program that they had in that example we were looking at. Um, and there's a few different ways you can do that. Usually you do sort of this context.register and then there's a few different um, things we can register interest in. And I haven't used them all, I'm not familiar with all of them, but for example we've got register syntax tree actions. We can register um, once a syntax tree has been parsed, we can look at that tree. We can also you, you know, go more fine-grained. So if we only wanted to look at invocations, we could like do something like register uh, invocation uh, act sorry, re register syntax node action. Um, I don't have an action that we can give it, but we can look for syntax kind dot invocation expression. So if we had some analyzer and we only wanted to look at invocations, that's how we would do something like that. And that looks at the syntax node level. Then we've got this register symbol action. That's what they did in our example, uh, where they're looking at sort of the backing symbol. So we have some earlier videos, you might want to go and check those out if you don't know the difference between syntax and symbols, but symbols are sort of the higher level concepts within uh, a C-sharp compilation, where syntax trees represent like individual files like this one here. Um, then finally, what they do is they actually pass in the method that's going to do the analysis. And this method, um, we'll just go through it really quickly, what it does is it knows that it's only going to be firing on named types. So the first thing it does is it say, okay, they're giving me a symbol. I know it's going to be an, uh, an I named type symbol. Let's just cast it to that, make our life easier. Then what it does is it checks, does the name, and it turns it into a character array, have any lowercase characters? And if so, we create a diagnostic, and we do that by passing in that rule from earlier we give it a location, so where in source code do we want our squiggles to, to show up, and we give it a name. Um, in this case, the reason we're passing in this name is because the, the format for the message we're showing the users is like one of those uh, stringed out format things where they have like the curly braces and a zero, and you pass in variables to be substituted into the string. So in this case, like, we just look here, you can, you can pass in as many uh, message arguments as you want. Uh, it just takes objects and it just probably calls two string on them and substitutes them into the string that you're showing your user. And then finally we do the actual part where we report it to the user. And that's basically what we have for analyzers. So in the next video what we'll do is we'll take a look at the code fix portion of this and and sort of what it's responsible for. And then in future videos, we'll start tweaking these and building our own analyzers. So thanks for watching.